one, if you have access to trained people, you can go to a GitHub or you can go to foundations like Hyperledger and then download the entire code. Uh, you don't have to pay even a single paisa of license fee. It's open to it's open source, open to use, and open to develop. On the other hand, if you're not able to develop it by yourself, there are managed blockchain uh, services which are available by almost all leading players in the industry. IBM has a managed blockchain platform. Oracle has a managed blockchain sorry, managed blockchain platform. SAP has something called as a Leonardo, and uh, VMware and the others are also coming up with their own managed blockchain services which are available on a SaaS model. You can uh, you can pay them a particular subscription fee. Uh, on a cloud instance, you can start using those uh, blockchain platforms. True. And uh, while staying on SaaS, uh, I, Sandeep, and I want to ask a question around, uh, of course, it's a heated topic around great addition. But, uh, but if you look at infrastructure as a service, the low code, no code, uh, uh, opportunities like Mendix, leveraging Mendix and other uh, tools, and also the SaaS that is available out there. Do you think that because of the demand current and, and the deficit around the talent, uh, would that be the go forward approach by the organizations? Um, see, the thing is, uh, one of the aspects of what software truly is, is the best of us for the rest of us. And, and that's not limited to just software programmers. So what low-code, no-code does is enables a lot of subject matter experts to use us as a tool to still leave an imprint of logic. And I think that's a great trend to come up to, and which is being enabled by this IIS, SaaS, PaaS, and of course the local code. So a lot of people who are in marketing will need to work with a mathematician to make a marketing model, but include uh, a SaaS model of mathematical modeling and try out and just figure out just what is working for the real life problems. A doctor can then no need to know community mathematics but can use a, a Monte Carlo simulation to simulate drug tracks on the basis and use his expertise. So I guess that trend is a very healthy trend. Now coming to talent, um, talent scarcity is an economics problem, it's a demand and supply problem. The good side is that there's a lot more innovation is happening, a lot more proliferation of technology is happening, and hence there's a shortfall. But where these things come to bridge the gap is, so many people who are trained so-called for software subjects can still be really very relevant to software development if we propagate these things. Of course, performance is an issue, other aspects are issue, but that can always be honed up. The entire process of innovation is if you try 10 things, probably two things need to finally go to the market. So instead of pulling raw engineering talent along the 10, which we were doing previously, if we can bypass the market demand needs by putting the next tier of subject matter experts and then prop up the two and then focus our technology talent on those two, I think it's an environment wise will gain significantly. The third aspect of course is are we really training software engineers? I mean anyone who's running a shop knows that we almost get uh, we only are recruiting for trainability and knowledge IQ not really for skills. We have to develop that. So honestly, we are mostly recruiting people who we believe are able to learn fast than people who we believe know a particular XYZ subject. And that trend is gone. Add to that technology obsolescence. Even if they have learned something, is it really going to be relevant in two, three years time? Forget 20 years. Every 18 months, something is changing. So what we are going to train our kids for, what we are going to train our people for, how we are going to augment their knowledge, I think that's a real challenge. Then we get the right people. Someone coming from commerce background can make a much better uh, blockchain developer than someone coming from computer science background because they get it. And that getting it is more important from a common sense and knowledge perspective. I think we have to redefine as to who is employed, who's recruitment. Yes, the scarcity is there. That's a great sign. It will force us to look at ways we have not looked at. And that's where innovation happens. 